Welcome to this episode of our program, Arab Affairs. Uh, as usual, we will be discussing an Arab affair or an Arab file, and today we'll be speaking about, finally, an Arab summit would be taking place at the beginning of um, November. This is according uh, to the announcement by Algeria, uh, who will be hosting this year's uh, summit. This summit comes amid or amidst very difficult time for the whole world. This is a very important summit, could be one of the most important in uh, the history of Arab uh, summits due to the urgent causes that are raised there. <clears throat> also, um, this uh, summit comes after three consecutive years with no um, Arab summit taking place at all and um, the inability of the uh, Arab leaders to come all together in order to find solutions uh, for the existing uh, challenges. Today we'll be speaking about this Arab summit, the agenda of the summit, what is requested, how do the Arab nations look for uh, such uh, summits and for their future challenges that are facing uh, the Arab world and more. And uh, we'll be speaking about uh, that later on with in our episode. Before we delve into our discussion, let me first take uh, the Arab news that took place during this week and we'll come back for more discussion. <music> President Abdel Fattah Sisi held a phone call with Iraqi President Abdel Latif Rashid. The President greeted the new Iraqi leader who shortly gained the confidence of the Parliament to be appointed the new Arab countries the President. President Sisi retreated Egypt's continued support to the security and stability of Iraq. The Iraqi President thanked the President over this kind gesture and hailed the brotherly ties binding his country with Egypt. He also asserted the Iraq's keenness on boosting bilateral cooperation and his country's appreciation for Egypt's support to Iraq on all aspects and for Egypt's vital role in fostering the Arab common work in the face of current regional challenges. Major Iraqi political parties announced they want parliament to convene within days to hold a confidence vote in their proposed government. Lawmakers last week finally elected a new president who in turn nominated a prime minister. The coalition included the coordination framework, an alliance of powerful pro-Iran Shiite factions that holds 138 out of the 129 seats in parliament. Other members are a Sunni grouping led by parliament speaker uh, Mohammed Al Halbusi and two key Kurdish parties. The nominee for the post of Prime Minister Mohammed uh, Al Sudani has 30 days from October 13th to form a government. Egypt called for an immediate hold for vicious cycle of violence and provocations by the Israeli occupation forces in the occupied Palestinian territories. In a statement, the foreign ministry said that Egypt is following up with deep concern the developments in the West Bank and around the Aqsa Mosque, the areas that are witnessing continuous Israeli aggressions and provocations. Moreover, Egypt urged world powers, partners and sponsors of the peace process to shoulder their responsibility and to stop violence and take urgent steps to calm the situation to pave the way for resuming peace talks. On the ground, the Palestinian Health Ministry said early Friday that a Palestinian youth died shortly after being wounded by Israeli gunfire in the occupied West Bank. Al-Azhar welcomed Australia's reversal of its area recognition of Al-Quds as the capital of Israeli, stressing that Al-Quds was and will remain the eternal capital of the Palestinian state. The Islamic top institution also renewed its firm stance towards the Palestinian cause and its categorical rejection of any measures that violate people's Palestinian people's right to restore their lands and establish their independent state with Al-Quds al-Sharif as its capital. A Hamas delegation headed by Arab Relations Chief Khalil al Haya visited for talks with President Bashar al-Assad. The two-day visit by the Hamas delegation is the first since the Palestinian group 
severed ties with Syria a decade ago. It comes after the group signed a reconciliation deal with the Palestinian Fatah movement in Algeria last week, vowing to hold elections by next October. Lebanon's parliament failed for a third time to elect a successor for President Michel Aoun, stoking fears of a political vacuum after his mandate expires at the end of the month. Parliament Speaker Nabih Berry called for another vote on Monday in the hope of overcoming long-running discord between political factions in crisis hit Lebanon, already governed by a caretaker cabinet. Lawmaker Michel Mouawad emerged as a front-runner when Parliament first convened to vote on a new president last month. Kuwait's crown prince swore in the new government on Monday following a reshuffle aimed at addressing lawmakers' objections to the original cabinet lineup and ending a prolonged political feud. Crown Prince Sheikh Ahmed al-Sabah has, since taking over most of the running emir duties, been trying to resolve a standoff between the appointed government and the elected parliament that has hindered fiscal reforms. Several lawmakers publicly criticized the cabinet approved by Sheikh on October 5th for not reflecting the results of early elections in September in which opposition members made big gains. Welcome back. And uh, these were the Arab news that took place during this uh, week, or most uh, of them. Of course, there are uh, lots of uh, Arab news taking place all the week uh, long and uh, more, and continuing on of uh, important uh, issues. Before we move on to our discussion, let me first take this report and uh, Algerian. Uh, or Algeria announced the uh, completion of arrangements for the upcoming uh, 31st Arab Summit, which uh, is to be uh, held in Algeria uh, on the November 1st in 2nd. So before we go on with our discussion, let me first take this report and we'll come um, back. <music> Algerian officials announced the completion of arrangements for the upcoming 31st Arab Summit, which will be held in Algeria on November 1st and 2nd. The country's official news agency published a video on the preparations describing the event the most important in the history of the Arab summits, especially according to the agency after the success of Algeria's efforts to gather the Palestinian factions to sign a reconciliation agreement on October 13th. Media outlets launched a major promotion campaign for Algeria's preparations for the Arab meeting under the slogan Uniting the Arab League raised by Algerian President the campaign highlighted the president's efforts to persuade the Arab leaders, including kings and heads of state, to participate in the summit during visits he made to many Arab capitals over the past months. In recent remarks, Algerian foreign minister said his country wants the Arabs to unite on the occasion of the summit, just as the Palestinian ranks were unified. In an interview with a local newspaper last month, Tibun said that our keenness to organize the Arab summit in our country stems from our determination to make it a unifying event it will be god willing a new start for the arab world that is suffering from reporture on wednesday algerian interior ministry ibrahim Murad gathered security officials to discuss the arrangement related to the important arab event Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abulghid said that debate to rest by declaring to the press that it was finally agreed to hold the summit in Algeria, underscoring its importance, especially after three years of suspension due to the COVID-19 pandemic. He denied claims that the summit will be postponed or held in another country, revealing that Syria has chosen to skip this year's conference. The last time the League held a regular in-person summit was in Tunisia in 2019. 